Silver is silver. Really? Hey everyone, thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. Silver is silver. We hear that a lot. Or as one of my faithful viewers says, silver is silver is silver. <laughs> Check this comment out from Zen Master a while back. I like listening to Yankee, but my 13 years of silver stacking have not led me to the same conclusion as him. I think silver is silver is silver. I have never had any issues selling even the most generic silver. My favorite thing to stack are silver buffalo rounds. P.S. I have owned and sold four 100-ounce bars in the last 13 years. They all sold with no issue whatsoever. Great comment. Really appreciate Zen Master's support and candor with his uh, uh, refreshingly respectful disagreement with me. <laughs> hey, we're both still stacking, and that really is the most important thing when it comes to physical precious metals. But at a very rudimentary level, I actually agree with Zen Master. However, I'm not satisfied with leaving you at a rudimentary level of stacking. Mm -mm. I want to advance your stacking strategies, strategies that I've learned over the years stacking silver and gold. There are two main points that Zen Master makes that I want to challenge in detail while I open up this package that I just got. Okay, so the first is that he believes all silver is of equal value. And the second is that he has never had any issues selling larger size silver or generic rounds. Maybe you think the same way and have had the same experience. First is the idea that all silver has equal value. Silver is silver. Seems straightforward enough, right? You could say a very similar statement about a whole host of other things. Take cars. All cars are transportation, right? Their main purpose is to take you from point A to point Z. So yeah, cars are cars, right? But that's rather simplistic. And shoes too. I mean, all shoes protect your feet, right? Uh, uh, all houses provide shelter. Maybe you get where I'm going here, all right? But let me make sure because if you're honest with yourself, you know that you qualify these things based on many factors. You may value the uh, sporty look of the car you own or how fast it can go from zero to 60. <laughs> or if you're like old Yankee, you may value boring stuff like reliability or gas efficiency, especially now, right? These are qualities of a car that matter to you and me. And not all cars are of equal value. I mean, if you don't believe me, ask yourself, would you walk into a car dealership and say, hey, you know, uh, uh, cars are cars, right? You know, whatever you got, I'll buy. Uh -uh. You may value things like uh, more stylish shoes or more durable shoes. Uh, that home you live in probably has specific characteristics that you value greatly or that you don't value and you want to change, right? That is my point, value. We usually value things based on two primary characteristics, quality and price. In fact, value equals quality over price. You've probably heard the saying, you know, uh, so-and-so knows the price of everything, but the value of nothing. Yeah. You know, value and price are not the same thing. Now, let me bring it home to precious metals. Some of you might say that you only care about the price of a piece of silver and gold. That's it. The price for you uh, equals its value, plain and simple. The quality, or more appropriately, the uh, qualities that comprise that physical silver and gold doesn't matter one bit. Or at least that's what you claim. Hence the easy way out, silver, silver. However, I wonder if that's really true. If, if you bought a scratched up silver coin, would you care? Maybe, maybe not. If you were paying you know, a, a cheap price for a cull or circulated silver coin, you probably wouldn't care, right? Why? Because the quality of that coin divided by the price makes it a good value to you. You're after cheap silver. And if it's ugly, so what? 
You want something that's made of silver and that's it. You don't care about things like, you know, size, shape, condition, date, whatever. It's silver and that's it. But what about other qualities? Uh, maybe you care about resale value, all right? It's, you know, popularity is really important to you because you're going to try to flip it. Or maybe it's a piece of poured silver that has some, you know, sentimental value <laughs> due to uh, who made it or how pretty it is or that you beat everybody else in an auction to get it. <laughs> Those qualities over a steeper price still make it of a higher value to you. Now, what about other qualities like uh, recognizability, barterability, trust, uh, liquidity, history, uh, easy storage, the list goes on and on. I just mentioned some of the qualities that I personally care about. Maybe you care about some of them too. And because of those qualities, you and I are sometimes willing to pay a slightly higher price to own them. <laughs> Maybe not much higher, but because you care about those qualities, they are more valuable. So I have three value tiers with my precious metals. Value tier number one, higher value. Value tier two, medium value. And value tier three, lower value. And at a basic level, all right, all of them have some value because they're made of silver and gold, right? In other words, I value all of these more than you know, fiat dollars or diamonds. So the high value tier one items are, for me, circulated silver, all right, or, you know, cull, worn, and uh, these are sovereign silver, I should say, right, silver minted by a government mint, so government minted silver bullion in a circulated or cull condition, all right, uh, U.S. constitutional silver, all right, love constitutional silver, um, uh, uh, dimes, uh, quarters and halves in that order, actually. And then gold, all right? I value gold a lot in the one ounce weight. But why? Why, why is this tier one? They're a higher level of trust and recognizability. They have a higher level of liquidity, uh, barterability, and they do have somewhat lower premiums. Now, I know I'm pointing out American Silver Eagles there, but bear with me on that last point, okay? These are cull and circulated, right? So the middle tier, all right, tier two, that consists of BU, or brilliant uncirculated sovereign silver coins, okay? And they can usually come in uh, one ounce variety, like this uh, Britannia, right? Very, uh, very good for me to get. I love the BU, they're beautiful, right? Uh, Morgan in peace dollars, okay? All right, that falls into that category. Um, and uh, fractional gold, all right, right there, uh, quarter ounce gold coins, and rounds and bars. So here's a Morgan style one ounce round, and uh, of course the Buffalo silver round, right, and some bars, usually one ounce smaller bars. All right, these are tier two items for me. Why? Well, in general, they have less trust and recognizability, especially with the rounds and bars, but also foreign uh, BU silver sometimes has less recognizability. But the premiums are better with the rounds. The BU Eagles, the Maples, the Britannias, they're nice to look at, they're beautiful, but the premiums are higher than the circulated uh, sovereign silver. And when it comes to fractional gold, you're going to spend much more than those one ounce gold pieces over there. But you pay for that because of their convenient fractional size. All right, now the lower tier. And, and please remember, when I say lower tier or tier three, it's not that I don't like them, okay? I actually own pretty much every single one of the items that I'm going to talk about. I just don't stack them with high frequency, okay? but they consist of large silver rounds and bars. And when by large, I mean, you know, five, uh, you know, 10 ounce, I should say, kilo, 100 ounce. Mid-tier would be about the, you know, one to five ounce range, but the, the higher uh, weight, 
right? Uh, a proof coin, okay? A commemorative coin, a uh, low mintage bullion, all right? Uh, numismatic silver coins or poured silver art, uh, fractional silver rounds, or uh, small fractional gold, like uh, one-tenth or one-twentieth of an ounce. So why? Well, the qualities of Tier 3 are unique, okay? And I and let's consider them. Those big bars, you know, the 10-ounce, kilo, 100, while they're cheaper per ounce and really fun to hold, they are less liquid, those collectibles or, or poured art, you know, like this, <laughs> this ice cream cone. I love it. <laughs> or uh, that, that silver cannon. Or this. Oh, yes. One of uh, silver dragons poured bars, right? They're fun, okay? But they're even more uh, uh, illiquid. Um, commemoratives, numismatics, they rarely hold their value, and in a barter scenario, they have a lower trust value. Many of the items in this tier, like the tiny fractional gold coins, have super high premiums. I'm not primarily a collector stacker, okay? I don't hoard high premium items. I like them. They're beautiful. I mean, shoot, who wouldn't like... Oh, that's cool. Who, <laughs> who wouldn't like a proof Libertad? I mean, that is just gorgeous. But... The premiums, they're so high. And so they are not uh, what I stack. And that is why they are of lower value to me. So there you have my three value tiers and the reasons why they range in value to me. With this more honed perspective, can you see why not all silver is silver and why not all gold is gold? Not all types of silver and gold are of equal value. Now to the point, Zen Master makes about having no issue selling his large 100 ounce bars or generic silver rounds. I agree, totally. I could walk into Tim's shop tomorrow and sell him a 100 ounce generic silver bar. No problemo. Well, hypothetically, that is, I, I don't actually own any. But that is in March of 2022, right now, when the Proverbial stuff hasn't hit the fan yet when we haven't experienced widespread societal breakdown, uh, a dollar collapse, a, a scenario our country hasn't fully witnessed since its birth. How we live now, right now, is not at issue here. We enjoy relatively uninterrupted commerce. The, the dollar is still the uh, powerhouse reserve currency of the world. We have warm well-lit homes, full grocery stores, full gas stations, and local coin shop dealers still in operation, still safe to visit, and, and still wanting to exchange your silver for fiat currency. That is not the time for which I am stacking. And you know that if you watch my channel. I'm a proud prepper stacker, and as such, it doesn't matter to me that right now, a large bar of generic silver can easily be exchanged at an LCS for dollars. I, I don't care. Those are still low value items to me because I'm preparing for a black or gray market to exchange my bullion in, something I hope I never live to see. As to the poured silver artwork, I, I think these are just beautiful, right? I do buy some silver ice cream cones on rare occasions for fun or to support people in the community that I deeply respect or as a conversation piece, but that's it. And as to what I just bought, let's see what tier this falls into. <laughs> well, obviously, tier two. Look at that. Buffalo round. I got this for quite cheap actually so let's just put that right there okay so i hope i've explained my approach and my perspective here i'm still stacking the yankee way which you can hear more about via my youtube playlist by that name i wonder if you have silver and gold value tiers what precious metal qualities matter to you in addition to price let me know right down there in the comments below and as always i hope your day is a-okay.